In this video, I'm going to talk about the attractiveness principle archetype. This archetype is, is pretty much the same as the limits to growth archetype, except that it acknowledges the fact that seldom is there only one limit to growth. Growth is, is something that requires resources. And typically, it requires different levels of different types of resources. Seldom is there um, a growth scenario where there's only one single resource required to enable or promote that growth. So this is simply to acknowledge the fact that there could be two or three or four different growth limiting factors so that if you find one, you shouldn't stop looking because there are likely to be more. And if you don't find them, you will in fact become the victim of them or your growth structure will be. So the, it's represented as, as a reinforcing growth structure with two balancing structures, each of which acts as a limit to growth depending upon the, the threshold defined for that particular limit. You think of um, a bacteria growing, a culture growing in a petri dish. It is limited by a food supply and, and space constraints so that the bacteria will stop growing when it runs out of food or when it runs out of space. So, or when it over, overly pollutes its environment and kills itself. So if we transform this into a, to a stock and flow simulation structure, this is the, the growth part of it. And here are the two balancing loops. I've gone ahead and added a couple of extra variables. One, an action factor to control the, the rate of growth, the slowing factor to control the rate at which the slowing actions actually affect the results themselves. And if we run this with the um, slowing factor of zero, it produces the, the typical reinforcing growth structure. The limiting factors don't come into play at all. Though if we go ahead and implement or go ahead and assign values for the slowing factor, and we set the limiting factors one at four and one at six. Notice that that at four and six there are the limiting factors come into play, and it begins each one of them is we'll see um, uh, yeah each one of them is limiting the the growth of this structure. Now if we increase the action factor so that it actually comes into play in in a stronger fashion. In other words, so sometimes when I talked about the the limits to growth structure, I talked about the limit possibly being of one of two types, either a hard limit or a soft limit, depending upon the way that it influences the growth of the structure. The if you're if you're filling a bathtub with water is not a reinforcing structure, though. The, the top of the bathtub is a limit such that when you reach that limit, the bathtub can't become any fuller because all the water runs over the edges. So that's, that's a hard limit. It can be a situation where when it runs into the limit, it doesn't say growth can't go beyond this limit. It simply says that growth begins to slow because of this limiting factor. So in, in this particular instance, the limiting factor has become um, so involved in the interaction of the structure that, that there is no more growth at all. And it's all produced by limiting factor one because the maximum value of this is four or just, just slightly above. And then if we look at another instance where the slowing factor is very large so that that the limiting factors one and two come into play with a sufficient magnitude, the limiting factor can effectively limit the result, detract for the result and from the result in such a way that that both limits come back into play when it happens. It's like um, 
growth reaches a threshold, something interacts with it and removes um, a portion of what's creating the, the limit, and then it starts over again. Consider, consider a population growth, where when the population gets to a certain level, it becomes of concern, and action is actually taken to reduce the population back down to some what's considered an appropriate level for that population. I mean, they, they do it with with um, um, different types of animals on an ongoing basis when the population gets too large and is likely to to out, outstrip its food supply or, or one or other reason. So um, just be aware that that the limiting factors can, can come into play in numerous different ways, and it depends upon what it is that's actually interacting in the structure. So um, I would encourage you, well, in terms of the strategy for dealing with this, it's the same as the strategy for the limits to growth structure. It's best if, if you're going to develop a growth structure to begin with, to seek out and understand the limits before you actually create the structure so that you diffuse the problem before it ever occurs. But whoever gets credit for problems that are, for solving problems that don't happen. The second one is once the limiting factors come, actually become, come into play, finding a way to increase the capacity to deal with those limiting factors or find out a way to actually promote growth without the things that are that are creating the limits themselves. And depending upon what the actual things are that are part of the growth structure, um, either one of them may be possible. So I would advise you to, or I would encourage you to, to interact with this model, alter the variables, and rerun the simulation until you develop a, a level of comfort with the way that this structure behaves dependent upon the varying parameters that you have access to. So, hope you found this informative, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.